Righto, Year 9 Science in Week 5. We're looking at this investigation. Now, I know it says it's assessment, but that was assessment for the people who were using these learning materials year-round, so for distance education. We're just doing that as our lessons this week. It's not our assessment, but I would like everyone to get a, have a go at it because it's a pretty good little activity. Righto, so Nicola noticed that salt water conducted electricity but pure water didn't. Nicola wondered if the amount of salt in the water affected its ability to conduct electricity. And that's the really important one. So she wants to know what the relationship is between the amount of salt in the water and its ability to conduct electricity. After she had conducted her investigation, the report, she recorded her data in, had coffee spilt on it, been there. Fortunately, the table of results was still able to be read, but none of her other responses were legible, so you were to complete the missing sections. Righto. So, aim is what did she want to find out? And it's given to us up here. Nicola wondered if the amount of salt in water affected its ability to conduct electricity. Right, so you're going to have to use that sentence to answer this one. Predict what you think will happen. So, if increasing the amount of salt in water improves its ability to conduct electricity then and because so that's actually a little bit tricky at this stage because we don't know some of the background that goes with that so I think we'll leave that one till a bit later on in the session let's keep going down and have a look at the next bit the independent variable is the thing that the person who's doing the experiment changes. So what's Nicola going to change? She's going to change the amount of salt in the water. So that's going to be the independent variable. The dependent variable is the thing that she's measuring the effect of, on. So she's going to measure how much electricity the solution can conduct. All right, so the conductivity is going to be the dependent variable. And controlled variables. All right, so you'll have to look down in her materials and see and the not the, and the method and see what she's keeping the same. What variables is she keeping the same? So we would assume that she would be keeping the beakers all the same. She's using the same data logger. What is she doing? She's measuring 25 mils into the 50 mil beaker. Rinse the probe thoroughly. Repeat steps 1, 2, 5 and 6 with the other solutions. All right, so she's going to use the same volume of each solution because she's got six solutions. She's got six solutions. Oops. I've got a new computer, it's got a touch screen, it's a bit tricky. She's got six solutions with different concentrations. But she's going to use 25 mils. So the things that she's keeping the same, she's keeping the volume the same, she's using the same data logger, she's using the same beakers. All right. What risks? Okay, so... If she's using glassware, whenever we use glassware, we've got to be careful of chips and cracks and breaks. And what measures can be taken to minimise the risks? Well, you should check your glassware before you start. If it gets broken, make sure you use a dustpan and brush to clean it up rather than your hands. The other thing that's in this experiment is the data logger so whenever there's electricity involved you have to be careful that you are not getting any water on your any of your cords that there's no tripping hazards that none of the cords have been damaged those sorts of things are going to be in your risk management what would the investigation look like so she's got 25 mils in each of six beakers and they've got different percentages of salt in them and then she's got a conductivity probe, which just looks a bit like a big, thick marker kind of thing, like a Sharpie. 
if you were drawing it and she's putting that into the solutions and it's connected to a data logger which just looks like a little box with a screen on it so you just draw that just imagine what it would look like if you're doing the experiment there's the results righto so let's have a look even without doing the graph as the salt concentration increases what's happening to the electrical conductivity it's increasing too. Hey. So it does look like there's a relationship between salt concentration and electrical conductivity. I'm going to come down here and do your graph. Now when you're doing a graph, the dependent variable, that's the thing that the person who's doing the experiment is changing, which in this case is the salt concentration. It goes along the x-axis and the thing that you measure the effect on so in this case, we're measuring the effect of the salt on the electricity or the electricity conductivity goes on the y-axis. And that's a convention that's always used. Right, so you'll need to do that graph then and talk about, read the method. Can she ensure that it's conducted safely? I think so. It's not very difficult. Describe the relationship between electrical conductivity and salt concentration. Well, we've, we can see that. It looks like it might even be proportional. Yeah, it's close to being directly proportional. I think when you graph it, it'll come close to being a straight line. So it'll be close to being directly proportional. When you double it, so when I double it from 0.2 to 0.4, it's going from about 3 to about 6. When I go from 0.4 to 0.8, 6 or 7, it's going nearly to 14. So it does look like it could be a, close to a straight line. So that would be a directly proportional relationship. When you double one, you double the other. Explain how this relationship relates to the flow of an electrical current through a soil salt solution. So you can measure the amount of salt in soils based on, the, because they're proportional, because there's a relationship between them, you can use this amount of electricity that's flowing through a soil solution as a measure of how much salt is in that soil. Right, a sentence or two summarising the experiment must relate to the hypothesis. The hypothesis was the thing that we said we'd do last. All right, so if electrical conductivity is related to the amount of salt in the water, then increasing the amount of salt will increase the electrical conductivity. But I don't think you have learnt the because yet. So that will become apparent by the end of the week. So that's part A.